Hey everyone, welcome back to Step Into Your Dream. I'm Mahsa, your guide through nursing school and beyond. Today we are unlocking the secrets to mastering respiratory assessment. How to properly listen to lung sound, what different breath sounds mean, how to use a peak flow meter, common respiratory meds, and some golden NCLEX tips. Get ready because this will make you feel like a respiratory rock star. So let's dive in. How to listen to long sounds like a pro? First, let's talk about stethoscope tips. Always listen directly on skin, no clothing. Use the diaphragm part, I mean the flat part of your stethoscope. Patients should sit up if possible. Compare side to side, not just up and down. Listen to full breath cycle, inhalation and exhalation. Listen when patient inhales and exhales. Now where to place your stethoscope? Front part or anterior part? We have six spots to listen, starting from high chest down to below the nipple line. Back or posterior? part we have eight spots from top of shoulders down to lower ribs size or lateral part we have two spots per side middle and lower section pro tips to remember always move in zigzag pattern comparing left to right and here I wanted to share this breast sound breakdown with their location. It's really, really important to know them. So first one is crackles or rails, which is like a popping or crackling sounds. Usually you can hear on the lower lobes or base of the lungs, which this one indicates fluid in alveoli we can commonly have in CHF or pneumonia. Wheezes. They are like high-pitched sounds. They can be heard throughout long fields louder during the expiration they are all indicating the airway is narrowed we can see that in asthma and copd ronchi that's the low pitch sound it's like you can hear it anywhere and it's really really mainly located on the center of the chest that indicates mucus or secretions in the lungs we can see that in bronchitis strider is a harsh high-pitched crowing sound this can be heard on the neck area and upper airway this indicates there's obstruction on the upper airway we can see that on croup which is emergency plural or friction rub this is a grating or sandpaper sound you can hear that anywhere typically on the lower lungs this indicates inflamed pleura which can be seen in pleuritis what about absent breath sound that indicates silence you can hear anywhere but it's actually indicating collapsed lungs which can be seen in pneumothorax and also that indicates there's a blockage anywhere in the airway some tips to remember crackles think about base of the lungs wheezes can be here anywhere and also strider you hear it even without a stethoscope because it's very very loud okay now i wanted to share some tips about peak flow meter so what is that that's actually your best friend for asthma monitoring what it does it basically measure how fast a person can exhale helps a kind of spot breathing problem before symptoms get worse how to use this there is five simple steps number one we can stand or sit up straight number two we need to take a deep breath in number three we should seal lips tightly around the mouthpiece and number four we need to blow out hard and fast and finally, we need to write down the number. We need to also in understand three zones. There are three zones, which is very important to know. There is one that we call green zone, yellow zone, red zone. Green zone is 80 to 100%. That indicates you are good. Yellow zone is usually 50 to 79%. We need to be cautioned because maybe we need to be going to the doctor so they can adjust our medications. Red zone is usually below 50%. That's emergency. We need to take an action. Remember, everyone should know their personal best number so based on that they can assess themselves to see where which zone they are falling into and next section i wanted to share about respiratory medication 
Respiratory medication is very important to know because uh, we need to know what they do and also this part is usually NCLEX favorite. So number one, short, short acting bronchodilators or rescue inhalers. The example is albuterol. This is usually for asthma attack or sudden shortness of breath. The second one is long-acting bronchodilator, which usually used for maintenance treatment. The example is salmiodorol. This is usually used for COPD or asthma management. And number three is inhaled corticosteroid. The example is fluticasone. This is usually used for reducing airway inflammation. And next one is oral steroids, the example is prednisone. This one is usually uh, used to um, treat the severe inflammation in respiratory system. Uh, for example, when patient has pneumonia or COPD exacerbation, they may prescribe this medication. Antibiotics also used to treat the respiratory issues. For example, if patient has bacterial infections like pneumonia, then the medication of choice is going to be antibiotics to treat bacterial infection. The other one is leukotriene. Usually um, the, the example is Motilucast. This one usually is for asthma prevention, especially if the asthma is allergic asthma. The pro tip to remember is rescue inhalers are usually for fast relief, but maintenance inhalers are for long-term control. So this is very, very important to remember. The other uh, section that I wanted to bring up and share with you guys is respiratory terminology. This is also another NCLEX favorite. So you guys remember these terms. Dyspnea means difficulty breathing. Tachypnea, rapid breathing. Bradypnea, slow breathing. Apnea, no breathing. And orthopnea, difficulty breathing when patient is lying down. Hypercapnia means too much CO2 in blood. Hypoxemia means low oxygen in blood. Pro tip to remember, if you see words like hypoxemia on NCLEX questions, always think about oxygen first. And our last section, I wanted to review a kind of NCLEX respiratory assessment power tips with you. Always, always remember to assess before acting or giving medication. Watch for early signs of hypoxia, which are restlessness, anxiety, irritability. And also remember, normal SpO2 is 95 to 100%, but if patient has COPD, then that number is going to be between 88% to 92%. They are not gonna have 100% as their normal. So 88 to 92% is their normal. And also remember to use ABC for assessment. Always airway, breathing, and circulation. And remember, if a patient has noisy breathing, but they have stable vital sign, versus a patient that has silent chest and their O2 status is dropping, who do we see first? Absolutely, we have to first treat or assess the patient that has silent chest because that's an emergency, right? Perfect, that is it for today, guys. We need to remember all these tips for our ankle legs. So if this video helped you, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and share it with your classmate. And tell me in the comments, which long sound do you find the trickiest to identify? Stay inspired, stay curious, and always, always step into your dream. See you next time. Thank you so much.